Hey guys, it's Kelly with My Metamorphosis. And I am a day late and a dollar short <laughs> with this video, but shoe. Redo. Hey guys, it's Kelly with My Metamorphosis and I am a day late and a dollar short with this video, but I am here. Don't do it, kitty. To bring you Mental Health Monday on Tuesday. So, um, you guys grab a drink, grab a snack, sit back and relax, and let's enjoy this very first Mental Health Monday video together. All right, so, you know, this is new for me too, so I am um, going to be looking at some notes here. And, um, you know, I decided to do this, this video, um, this Mental Health Monday video, um, because I struggle with mental health issues and, you know, I've always been really open with you guys about, um, my life. Uh, I've come to you very vulnerably. Um, and I just, you know, I want to continue to do that. And there's two reasons why. One is, I wanted my channel to be like that from the get-go, just real, raw, and authentic. Um, I know for me personally, I those are, are the kinds of channels that I gravitate toward. Um, the other reason is because um, if I can help anybody out there um, who shares the same struggles, then um, that makes my heart happy. So this video and every video um, for Mental Health Monday will be all about mental health. Um, we're kind of just figuring this out as we go, my friends. So, um, but today I wanted to just go through a few things with you um, just to kind of set the foundation. So um, so I've already talked about what is this channel and, and why. Um, and so here is where it gets a little difficult. But again, I have chosen to come to you um, completely um, open and honest and vulnerable. So. I'm 49, I'll be 50 in December. And at the age of 40, I was diagnosed with uh, bipolar one disorder. Um, and bipolar one disorder, um, you know, I just watched a video on this. Uh, oftentimes people think, and I did too, that Bipolar one is, you know, the worst of the two. There's bipolar one, there's bipolar two, there's actually a, a, another one as well, which I'm not going to get into because I don't really know much about that. Um, and there could be even more um, than that. So on that note, let me just um, put a disclaimer out there. Let me, um, you know, just, to protect myself and others, um, I am not a mental health professional. I am not a doctor of any sorts. I am just someone who is going to share my own personal journey with you. Please excuse Bebe as she groans in her sleep, which she often does. She's telling me that I'm bugging her. I'm being too loud right now. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, this is just from a, um, uh, like a first person um, point of view. Uh, it's not from a medical standpoint or anything like that. Now, I will down the road 
probably be popping in some images, you know, um, just to kind of like um, help anyone who's watching to understand more about what I might be talking about, but it will all be from um, research. It, it will not be, you know, my my own uh, makeup of, of what um, of what that specific topic might be. Now, I will give my opinions and it's going to be my opinions based on my own experience um, and how it affects me. So at no point will I be trying to tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing. Um, I definitely will never come on here and tell you to um, go off of your medications. I will always come on here and tell you to listen to your doctor's advice and um, and if you don't uh, trust, you know what's going on with your doctor, then um, it may be time to have a conversation with them. And if that doesn't go well, it may be time to look for a different provider. So, um, but on that note, uh, or now that that's out of the way. Um, I got diagnosed with bipolar one disorder at the age of 40. Um, I was, um, I grew up with a father who was what they call at that time manic depressive. Um, I did watch my dad struggle with um, grandiose, um, which are like the high highs um, of mania. And I also watched him struggle with the depressive side, um, which is usually the aftermath of a manic episode. Now, my dad was a, um, he was a businessman for over 30 years. I grew up in a flooring business. Um, my dad wrote a book. My dad was, um, um, a great businessman. My dad was a um, an amazing chef. Owned a restaurant for um, a short time, and all of those things. Now, I did not understand this growing up. Were parts of his manic depression, which now they call bipolar disorder. Um, he absolutely had bipolar one disorder, which. Um, I want to say so. Um, sorry, I think I, I started to talk about this and got off on something else. But okay, so let me back up. So, so oftentimes people think that bipolar one is the worst, you know, kind of bipolar, um, you know, in comparison to bipolar two. That is not necessarily the case. They just manifest themselves differently. Bipolar one is mania, bipolar two is hypomania, and each of them will have the depressive side as well. So my dad was definitely bipolar one. Um, my dad was also on just one medication, which was an antidepressant. He was on Zoloft for decades. Um, and um, as someone who is bipolar, I now know, of course, growing, again, growing up, I didn't know this. Um, I now know that um, you cannot take an antidepressant alone without having some sort of bipolar episode manifest itself. Um, oftentimes, that is how people get um, uh, diagnosed with bipolar and in fact that was like one of the first like medically professional um, you know speaking their first clue as to okay she me might be bipolar because I was also put on an antidepressant and had a manic episode so fast forward I was then um excuse me, when I was actually diagnosed bipolar, 
um, they kind of gave me a loose diagnosis at that time. Um, but down the road, um, I got, you know, a, a set in stone diagnosis. Um, and that is when um, they, you know, put me on a mood stabilizer along with, so here's the antidepressant and here's the mood stabilizer and they have to meet somewhere in the middle so that the um, antidepressant doesn't shoot you off into mania. Okay, so back to my dad. Um, so I watched my dad like do all these amazing things, right? And did not realize that that was part of his um, bipolar disorder. Unfortunately, in all his years before he passed, he was never properly medicated. He was never on a mood stabilizer to keep his antidepressant from shooting him into mania. So my dad had a lot of, um, you know, this going on. And um, looking back, I can see how disheartening that was to him. Um, like starting something and then like not really finishing that and then going on to this and then not really finishing that and then going on to this. And I struggle with this as well. And you guys have seen some of that on my channel. Like I have the best intentions and um, all these ideas. And I... Um, have a hard time um, either setting them in place or setting them in place and then consistently following through with them. Part of that has been my schedule, my YouTube schedule, you know, um, maybe a couple of years ago, a year or two years ago now, um, I, you know, started, I wanted, my desire was to do a YouTube schedule and I just couldn't get it in place. And so, again, part of why I've decided to do this sort of video with you guys is so that you can, if you're going through these things or if you have a loved one going through these things, you can go, oh my gosh, that's what's going on here. Or even you guys not knowing me really, you know, 100% going, oh, that's what's going on with her. It's not that she's being flaky. It's not that she doesn't care about us. It's that she's doing the best she can. So, um, this video is not about my dad, but I did want to give, it's also to, it's speaking about that is also not to run his name through the mud. So, um, First of all, let's just say that mental health should have no shame attached to it. Um, it's something that's completely out of our control. It's our genetic makeup. It is our, um, if it's not our genetic makeup, it's um, environmental or um, something traumatic that happened. Sometimes it's all of the above. And I'll talk more about that, um, how it has, um, where it, where it came from in my life. Um, so, in the back of my mind, I always thought, at least as I got into teenage years, that I probably have this, this thing that my dad has as well. Um, I started to um, self-medicate at a young age with alcohol and other substances and um, which oftentimes people with bipolar and other mental health issues do because we have not been properly diagnosed we are not on medications or the correct medications so what do we do we turn to these substances that make us feel like we can cope unfortunately with those sorts of substances, um, even if it's something legal like alcohol, we, it's really the worst thing that someone who is struggling with a mental health condition or conditions can do because the crash and the burn is extremely painful for someone who is, who is the person struggling with the mental health stuff 
and the people who are around them watching them crash and burn. So, um, so I got diagnosed at the age of 40 with bipolar disorder, bipolar one disorder. So I struggled with the massive mania, um, uh, that was predominant, um, versus the depression. Um, lots of wild years, lots of, um, mistakes, lots of, um, heartbreaking mis mistakes, lots of, um, risky behaviors, lots of risky situations, um, a complete roller coaster. So finally, when I got this set in stone, um, diagnosis of bipolar one disorder, it was after a psychiatrist because the loosely diagnosed bipolar was from my primary doctor. But I had a psychiatrist say to me, you have to stop drinking. You have to give me six months of not drinking before I can um, diagnose you properly. And um, so I did that. Um, and I'll never forget her um, like the way she presented this to me was, oh yes, you're bipolar one disorder <laughs> or you're bipolar one. <laughs> so, um, and you know what? Talk about a weight that had lifted. It was like, okay, so this is why this, this, and this happened. Why I allowed these things to happen in my life. Um, so it was a, sorry, it makes me emotional because it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I have the, this thing and I have to hide it from the world now. It's like, no, I have this thing and now I have an answer. So it was a massive weight list lifted. It was a massive burden lifted. Um, excuse me. So, um, so like I said, I'm 49, almost 50. So the last almost 10 years, um, actually not quite 10. Um, the last, well, yes, the last 10 years, it has been a ride of trying to get on the right medication. Um, some other diagnoses, um, coming into play, um, later on, which I, I won't get into those today because the video will be super duper long. Um, and... Um, I would say though that the last four or five years have been the most difficult, um, because some bigger, um, medication changes came about, um, with that came... Sorry, my cat's being a butthead. Um, came, you know, uh, horrific side effects. And so just like a lot of bouncing around, the best way I can describe it is um, a pinball machine. I just kind of felt like I was just being bounced around all over the place to the point where um, I started to self-medicate with alcohol again. Um, and I, I had been struggling with that on and off. Every single time I was not on the right medication combination, I would immediately go to my self-medication of alcohol. But I had some sober time. And then um, like I had a couple relapses uh, within the last four or five years, um, you know, where I was um, a few relapses. Um, with alcohol where I was uh, just desperate, just desperate to feel okay. Um, almost seven months ago, I had a relapse with alcohol. Um, and I, um, it devastated me. Um, so let me just say, There's one thing worse you can do um, 
like let's say that you're not on medication at all and you self-medicate and you know to control so to speak your bipolar disorder okay that's never going to be a good thing but then when you're on medications and decide to self-medicate or you're bouncing on and off of medications catastrophe i mean like really it's nothing good is going to come of that um so that's what i've been going through um, recently and so right now I'm going through some medication changes um, and let me just look at my notes here I planned on talking with you about my other diagnoses but um, I'm actually going to I think I'm just gonna do each of those in one video until I kind of because I did otherwise it's also just too much to comprehend but um but I will tell you, um, sorry guys, give me a second here. I'll tell you that um, the, the medication management part of mental health disorders can be extremely frustrating, difficult, um, and you can frankly just feel like you want to give up. Um, and what I, what I mean by give up is, um, not exiting this world. However, unfortunately, some people do struggle with it at that level. Um, but I mean like just saying forget medications and I'm just going to do this on my own. Um, so what it feels like let's go there what it feels like to be um bipolar um and to not have the correct medication maintenance going on and i will tell you even when you do there are, it's it's never 100 percent um in um remission so to speak so i will tell you that it's lonely you can be in a room full of people and it's it can still feel very alone. Okay, let me just say, this is how mine manifests itself. Um, no one understands me. Um, um, people think I'm weird. Um, I personally deal with depersonalization and derealization. So this is one of those times where I wish I could like, I might, you'll see it by now if I decide to um, pop up some, some pictures here for um, these two terms. Depersonalization is something I deal with and derealization. But in a nutshell, depersonalization is when I feel separate from myself like I'm watching myself in a movie it is one of the most haunting and terrifying and alone lonely feelings ever then there's derealization where you don't feel separate from yourself but you feel separate from the world so like I live in an apartment complex okay there's lots of activity out here all the time I can be in my apartment, I can even hear activity, and I still feel like I'm not in the same world as they are. Now, we're not talking about psychosis. Um, there is something called schizoaffective disorder, which is a combination of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, where you can, uh, what, so you have like the mood disorder, actually you can either have bipolar or depression. Um, and then you also have like the hallucinations and the delusions of, um, the, of schizophrenia. So um, I'm not talking about halluc hallucinations and delusions that can come from a psychotic episode. Um, I am talking about, you know, 
that you're not alone, but you can't get over the feeling of being alone. Um, uh, feeling less than, um, knowing my potential, I'll, I'll talk first person, knowing my potential and unable to live it out. Wanting to have the desire, oh, I'm sorry, having the desire to, to do, but, but unable to. So like, I will feel frozen, paralyzed. Um, so again, I have other diagnoses, um, and a lot of them come under the topic of anxiety, um, and so those other diagnoses can also bring me into like depersonalization and derealization and all these other symptoms that I, that I feel and experience with bipolar one disorder. Um, so, um, let's talk about medications. So right now, um, let me get a sip of coffee. I already had my cup of um, hot coffee this morning. I just wanna show you what I call my little Hocus Pocus cup. I know I hauled this a long time ago from uh, Dollar General. There was a black and green, or wait, excuse me, main color green with black polka dots. main color orange with black polka dots and then the black with the orange and I had to get this one because it reminded me of Hocus Pocus. So right now, oh my gosh, I don't know if Grocery Outlet carries the same stuff in every state because they're such a hodgepodge type grocery store but it's worth going to check it out right now and I know I never hauled did this grocery, actually, I have the non-perishable stuff I still need to haul for you for um, from Grocery Outlet, but I do have some things in my fridge uh, and freezer. So one of the things I got was this um, iced coffee, I think it's International Delight, iced coffee, and it's churro, and it's so stinking good. Excuse me. <laughs> so, um, all right, guys. Medications. Nine, almost ten years ago, they started me off. I told you they had put me on an antidepressant. Now, let me tell you why I went on that. And this was probably about three or four years before I ever got diagnosed. So maybe at the age of 36, 37 probably 37. I was having panic disorder, which, okay, there's one of my other diagnoses, so badly that I would be driving in traffic and have to stop and get out. Like, there's no concept of, I'm going to get ran over, I've got my kids in the car. As embarrassing and horrible as that sounds, that was my reality. So they put me on Prozac. Fluoxetine is a gen generic name. Um, it immediately helped with my panic. Um, panic disorder. So panic disorder is one of those things that falls under anxiety disorders. Um, but that's when it made me go manic and I got that loose diagnosis of bipolar disorder. So anyway, so let's say about 37 so I, I get on that antidepressant and um, it helps with the panic pretty like soon on, like within a month or two. And then um, when I finally got the diagnosis of bipolar one disorder at 40, they, um, they put me on, um, Gosh, I'm trying to think. So those three years or so, I think I just was going around with Prozac 
and no mood stabilizer. So I was like probably manic off the hook for a few years. Wow, thinking back to that, I sure was. So um, again, like this is another reason, like, or this is another thing, like be careful if your primary doctor, because some primary doctors will take over your mental health meds, but they should always tell you that that is not, not their area of expertise, if it's not their area of expertise. So um, I should have really been on a mood stabilizer for those three years. I actually, thinking back, I caused a lot of damage in those three years. But I believe they didn't want to take me off of the Prozac and I didn't want to go off of it because it was helping my... Um, my panic disorder. I'm sorry guys, excuse me for one sec. My nose is running. So, um, so again, fast forward to the, the concrete uh, diagnosis of bipolar disorder, bipolar one disorder. They immediately put me on something called Depakote, or the generic version is Divalprex sodium. Um, also, almost right away, it helped uh, stabilize my mood. And that's what that antidepressant needed. That's what my bipolar needed, was to have those two come together. So I did really well for a while on those. Um, and then when I got separated from my husband, which was, we will have been divorced six years in September and we were separated for two years before that with like a break between right in the middle, a year into our separation, we tried to give it a go again for about a month. Um, so almost eight years ago, so gosh, you guys, hold on, let me think about this. Is that right? Um, yeah, because I'm almost 50, so... So yeah, about two years of the Depakote being in the Prozac doing its job and getting my bipolar disorder under control um, is when I got separated and I kind of just really fell off and so at that time um, my um, psych doctor uh, put me on lithium. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm getting warm. Um, welcome to perimenopause and also medication changes. So give me one minute here. I'll be right back. All right. I'm going to have to definitely like run this video through my noise reducer. All right. So like I was saying, I'm going to have to run this video through my noise reducer because I now have my fan next to me so um separated from my ex-husband um they put me on lithium and um okay so now let me just tell you right now as you know i was put on the fluoxetine slash prozac for panic disorder um put on depakote slash divalprex sodium for um just to bring the two together and make sure I wasn't gonna go manic and Depico also helps with mania. Go on the lithium um, and I, um, it is for mania as well. At that time, I struggled more with the mania part of my bipolar one disorder than the depressive side of my bipolar one disorder. Um, couldn't afford to stay in our family home um, I also like started because I had to leave my job. I was, um, not, um, I was going through some physical health issues and was not doing well emotionally. Um, so we had to move out of our home. We were moving into an apartment. It was the heat of the summer 
And one thing about lithium is you have to be very careful in the heat. You also cannot get dehydrated because both of those can put you into what's called lithium toxicity, um, which can make you violently vomit and and very sick um, and worse. So, um, so it was just, um, my boys and I, we were moving things out from one place to the other and I got heat stroke and I got toxic with the lithium. And so I had to go off of it. Um, I probably didn't have to go off of it. It scared me so badly. I went off of it through my doctors. Um, you know, for, with his permission. And then, um, so I kind of like, I started self-medicating with alcohol again. Um, I um, won't get into all that because that'll be another video. Um, and then I would say, um, well, no, I will say this because this is part of this. Um, I was, I, I sunk to a different level of alcoholism, addiction. Give me one second, guys. Hey, guys, sorry. I don't know who that first call was. It was some weird area code, so I ignored it and figured they could just leave a message, but um, the second call was Trace, and he's, um, I got to take him and his buddy to the fair in a little bit. So, um, so, so let's see, where was I? Um, I kind of just chose to self-medicate, self-medicate with alcohol again. Um, it got so bad. I, I put myself in treatment. This was in 2017, right after my divorce. And, um, so while I was in treatment, um, I, cause I had kind of fallen off with my psych doctor. And so I got going with someone again, that was kind of part of treatment. And that's when they put me on a drug called Seroquel or Quetiapine, which is the generic version. Um, that was like a saving grace. Um, it, I realized that I was struggling more with depression at this point and a lot of it was situational. Um, so I was put on the Seroquel, which is, a, it, which is, okay, let me go back to the Depakote. It's a mood stabilizer, like I said, but it's typically given for migraines and epilepsy, but they found that it has a use for um, as a mood stabilizer. Seroquel is an antipsychotic, which they used to give for just schizophrenia. Then they found it worked for bipolar disorder as well. It works for the bipolar depression. So I was on Depakote for the bipolar mania, Seroquel for the bipolar depression. And I finally felt like I was living my life. And um, however, I started to gain weight rapidly, which is one of the side effects. Um, and it was very sedating. So those are the two main, um, side effects as to why people don't stay on that medication. But I stayed on it because it was life changing. Um, I was also in recovery and so, you know, I was going to listen to my doctor, stay on the meds my doctor told me to and, and all of that. So, um, lived in women's and children's treatment housing for a while. This was in Yakima, which is a few towns away. And 
then eventually came back to Tri Cities, <clears throat> excuse me, sooner than I planned actually. And um, so that was in 2000. Um, let's see, that was in 2000. Uh, the Christmas of 2018, so almost 2019. And, um, sorry, I just gotta turn this thing off or it's gonna keep dinging at us. Um, and I was um, still sober, but halfway through the year I lost my dad, um, unexpected unexpectedly um, and um, I relapsed and um, so I would say from halfway through 2019 to let's see 19. yeah the last Um, the last four years, three and a half years has been a blur, to be honest with you. Um, that's also part of my mental illness. Um, those, that's part of, uh, what comes with, um, parts of my mental health diagnoses is, um, um, lapses in time. So, um, I would say that, um, I got back on track and, and I would say that for about a year I was doing okay. And then maybe halfway through 2020, um, like it just hit the fan and, um, I was kind of like, all over the place with medications, not only with, um, well, my doctor actually put me back on lithium um, a couple years ago, and um, because I was just going through a really rough time again, like kind of like before when I first got separated, and I knew to be careful more, you know, how to be more careful with it this time around, and so, things got better again and so you know like you're like okay you're like this when you're bipolar with no medication no diagnosis whatever um, but you're still like this you know with um, medication changes um, and that sort of thing when you're when your bipolar is just not being maintained properly so um, you know everyone else is like this you know like little ebbs and flows and we're like this so um so i would say um maybe this last year let's see so 2000 yeah like halfway through 2000 20 yeah for about a year I really struggled again and then um, yeah and then I would say um, for the past um, sorry guys I'm trying to recall um, yeah, the past two years I've been on lithium again and it has been a game changer as well. But then within the last six months, and if you can put two and two together about when I had my relapse, last six, seven months, 
I decided I'm tired of being overweight. I'm tired of being sedated. Um, I'm going to go off Seroquel. And um, there were a couple other little things they tried in between here and there, you know. And um, I immediately started losing some weight, which of course makes you less depressed, um, made me less depressed. However, all of a sudden, because it takes a while to get out of your system, especially because I was on it so long, boom, like one morning I felt like I woke up and I could feel that it was no longer, I had no bit of it left in my system and I was paying the price. Um, and actually, uh, before that, um, I was taken off of Depakote. So I had like two back-to-back -back big medication changes um, and two medications that had been working so well for me, but I couldn't stand the weight gain anymore. And so, um, course I relapsed with alcohol um, self-medicated with alcohol because I didn't have the medication that was working anymore um, was still on the lithium um, and then I was taken off the Prozac because they didn't think that it was really doing anything for me anymore you guys I crashed and burned um, like crashed and burned I um, really just um, I've never been so I've never struggled so badly with my mental health before and I've never struggled so badly with coping before um, it got to a really really bad place and um, so these last few weeks yes this is very recent they've been incorporating those medications back into my system as quickly as they could possibly do it without putting my body into a massive jolt so um, They actually put me back on Prozac for a different reason, which I'll explain to you another time. And in fact, I need to write that down so I don't forget for my next video. Um, but it just so happens to benefit my panic disorder. Um, you know, like initially and some other things. So, um, so right now they have been incorporating my um, Depakote, my Divalproc sodium back into my medication regimen um, and they're going to see how I do with that um, before um, putting me back on the Seroquel. Now, I am on a different form of the Depakote. I'm on the extended release, and that does seem to be easier on my body. Um, and then if I go back on the Seroquel, um, they may do the same. I actually have it right here, and they just told me to wait. Um, so guys, that's what's been going on with me. Um, I will tell you right now, um, as difficult as it has been to live with mental health disorders, sorry, <coughs> <coughs> sorry guys, excuse me, oof, um, the smoke here is just, oof, um, getting everyone's allergies going um, I know there's a purpose 
of that being uh, a constant in my life. And I do believe that at some point when I am repaired, that I will be able to help others, especially other women, through this journey of living with and healing um, from mental health issues. So, um, but now it's my time to heal um, and I'm going to take that time for myself and I just want you guys to be part of my journey. So, um, I um, can't tell you guys how much um, I love and appreciate you and how much um, you welcoming uh, this part of my channel just means the world to me and I just want to thank you guys and um, Don't be afraid to tell me by the way because I'm all about constructive criticism Like hey, you know, I Mean, I don't even think I would take this as constructive criticism, but anyway like, you know, hey, we can tell that you're doing better, you know, on your medication or whatever, you know, like that encourages me. Um, I'm not going to take offense to that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I am very, very, very well aware of when I'm not doing well. So um, it may, might not seem like it, but I'm very aware, probably ultra hypersensitive, sensitively aware. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, I will, um, you know, my plan is to like go over, you know, a little synopsis of what my video is going to be like from one day to one Monday to the next, you know, do it on Sunday night, Sunday day, afternoon, whatever. And, um, and, you know, just bring that content, content with, you know, to you guys and, um, and hope that it it helps to um, helps you to understand me, and it helps you to understand you, and it helps you to understand a loved one whom you might not get, and whatever the case might be. So please, you guys, comment down below. Talk with me. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know how you are doing. Um, I am. Um, on Instagram under uh, I'm not very active on there and I apologize but it's under my metamorphosis journey you can find that in my about section feel free to private message me on there if you don't want to comment to be openly viewable um, you can message me anytime and uh, again it's my metamorphosis journey um, on Instagram and um, yeah, you guys, I'm just really looking forward to um, this new YouTube schedule and um, my new relationships and my old relationships and just, you know, I want you guys again just to know how much I love and appreciate you and you guys stay safe and stay blessed, my butterflies, and I will see you very soon. Mwah.